All right, let's light this thing up. Is anybody out there? Do do be do boo boo do boo. Hey everybody, it's Mike Myers. Yay! Always wish I was the Muppets. I could do the. All right. What do we tell Mike? Clear as a bell. That's all I would hear. Hey everybody, it's Mike Myers. Welcome to the Monday edition of the Mike Myers live stream. COVID asks Mike anything. The goal of this live stream is to provide those of us who are isolated by the coronavirus the opportunity to continue our studies. And we are approaching a one year anniversary of this. That's like crazy. I've celebrated a Christmas and a May 1st and July 4th and I'm trying to think of all the different holidays. Lyndon Baines Johnson's birthday. <laughs> been a year how crazy is that long time well anyway uh and and it although the corona is certainly looking a lot better here in the houston area i've got fingers crossed in the next couple of months or so uh, we'll be in a position where we can make some choices about this i need to turn down some volume here can you still hear me now okay good all right, so um, anyway, uh, the goal of this uh, live stream is to provide those of us who are uh, isolated by the coronavirus an opportunity to ask questions. So we do concentrate on CompTIA exams, primarily CompTIA like IT Fundamentals, A+, plus, Net+, plus, Security+. Plus. So we can certainly go outside of that if you'd like. Uh, we also can do uh, general technical topics, which is also easy enough to do. Um, so, but basically here's how this works. You send me a question via this, the live chat, and once you send the live chat question, then I'll answer it for you, like right here. Uh, if you're the shy type, and there's nothing wrong with that, I have alternative contact information. Feel free to contact me at michaelm at totalsim.com. Just send me an email um, if you'd like, and I will be more than glad to answer the questions in that way if you'd like. Oh, yeah. So michaelimitotalsim.com, if you're a gamer, I'm Senior Pepe on Steam, and otherwise I'm just deswed at everything. So that is the whole idea behind this little live stream. So welcome aboard. Um, I don't have a lot of questions. Uh, sorry that I missed you guys on last Wednesday. Uh, I had just got my electricity back. I don't know if you guys heard. I heard it was in worldwide news. But the city of Houston, Texas, and southern Texas in particular, uh, got the coldest weather in 120 years. So, uh, it was cold, folks. And keep in mind, we live in a subtropical environment here in Houston. I, I have palm trees in my front yard, and uh, it wasn't good. I did okay. Luckily for me, I have gas, natural gas runs just about everything. And uh, so I couldn't get electricity with the natural gas but I was certainly able to keep the heat going. Um, so I actually ran the burners on my stove. I don't, don't tell me about health and safety. I was cold. And uh, the end result is uh, just running two burners. And I do not have that small of a townhouse. Kept the entire place pretty warm. Now, we were, I mean, it wasn't, you know, super warm, but it was very comfortable and that was fine. Um, the next day power kicks back in. A little bit later, internet's back on and I certainly do appreciate Dave Rush for covering for me uh, last Wednesday. Uh, I hope you guys had a good time with Dave. It's always fun. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we're back today. So it's all good. Anyway, um, do keep in mind that uh, this uh, live stream works until 4 o'clock Central Standard Time here in Houston, Texas, or until the questions run out. So if we have a quieter day and the questions kind of slow down, then sometimes we could quit a little bit early. It's no big deal. And I'm, I'm, my goal is to be here for you guys in whatever capacity I can be. Also, we do have a topic, like today we're going to be talking about the Intel Windows boot process. Um, especially if you have my training materials, I'm going to be taking this a little bit deeper than what you guys might be used to seeing. Um, but uh, other than that, we just feel free to ask, quest ask questions anytime you want. Uh, do keep in mind, I look, I look at the live chat. There is also the top chat. I, I don't look at that, so I'm looking at the live chat. And, uh, and if I miss a question, don't, don't get upset. Just type it again. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, we've got Scott Jernigan and uh, Dave Rush, as always, helping along. 
So if the, there's any issues or something, uh, you can feel free to uh, contact those guys directly. But other than that, well, pretty much straightforward. Um, I do have bad news. I got some very disappointing news. I've lost my co-anchors. Both Jack and Margo have moved back with their mama. So I am cat free, although Spewy, AKA Little Bit may show up from time to time. We are no more Jack and no more Margot. They're back with their human mom, so I'm happy for the kitties, but do be aware. So yeah, and no, I don't want your cat. All right, so anyway, let's take a look. Uh, we'll dive right back into some of the live chat questions, see what's out there. Uh, 128, well, some of you guys are here so pretty early. Santi, 24737, hey Santi, good to see you. Tarun Chadra, there. Tarun Chadra got my A plus. Congratulations to you, Tarun. Back at uh, 131. I can see that uh, you typed that in. Good for you, man. Way to do it. Way to do it. There's Alan. Mr. Me Seeks is here. Patricia Grace. Hey, nerd brethren. Hey, nerd sister. Wait a minute. That doesn't work. Never mind. Uh, Tolwut and Andre. Scott Jordan. Oh, yeah. So, of course, just because you guys are nice enough to be here, uh, we always have specials for you. Uh, the specials for this week. You ready? 50% off all total seminars, practice exams, and total tester bundles. So that's half off all of our practice questions and all of our bundles, which include the performance-based questions. And uh, in order to take advantage of this, first of all, it's open to anybody. Just because you showed up, you can take advantage of this. All you got to do is head over to www.totalsem.com and uh, head over to our merchant area grab some practice questions, and uh, just before you check out, type in the code URI, URI, URI2021 at checkout, in the, where you type in a special code and you get it half off. So not only do we already have some of the best practice questions out there, but we are at half the price of everybody else, and it's just because you're nice enough to show up here. So thank you very much for that, and uh, good, good for you. Do we see, I don't know, I see any questions here. I sound like lamb's wool wrapped in goose down and coated in warm, comma, cod liver oil. <coughs> Today's Martin Luther King Day, Scott? I didn't know that. Huh. Alex, Aleka, Alec, Alexa, Alexa. I know I can figure it out. Hey, Alexa, good to see you. DL Ross. Yeah, we're okay, man. It was a mess. A lot of people lost, uh, had their pipes frozen. So we're really good about warm weather here in Texas. We're terrible at that kind of cold weather. Andre de Goya, why not Deswet and Steam? I don't know. Because I've been, Senor Pepe has been a, combat name for me since the 90s so too lazy to change it andre for ak didar there he is hello mike and how is it everybody looks good yeah i'd be curious what happened to scott jernigan scott used to have all these banana trees in his backyard i'm curious if those just where'd you take those out years ago and i scott jernigan doesn't invite me to his house you know <laughs> It's all good. I'm goofing. Uh, lucky for me, I have gas. <laughs> yeah, this is lucky for me. Gruber Accountancy. There he is. 2.04 p.m. Gruber Accountancy. I have local LAN IP address connecting to my computer. Like as we work network. Okay, everybody has a uh, Gruber. Everybody has a uh, local IP address. It seems to to from some Google speaker devices tried to limit incoming by ports, but they seem to keep connecting. Ugh, Gruber, I don't know what you're talking about here, man. Do me a favor, Gruber, and can you just run an IP config and either email me a copy of that? Yeah, just email a copy. You can do that like right now. And uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to see what you're talking about. Gruber, I'm having a couple, I'm having a little trouble figuring out exactly what you're needing from me there, brother. So go ahead and send me a copy of that IP config and we'll, we'll work on it. 2.04 p.m. KD, glad you're okay. That's why I love living in South Florida. Man, I got to tell you, 
Um, I got some buddies who are down in South Florida trying to eliminate the lionfish. Lionfish are these very attractive Asian fish, which are now kind of taking over Florida. And these groups uh, that you can stay like really, really cheap in, in South Florida. This is more, uh, for locals up there, it's more uh, south of Miami. Let's just say that. Not quite the Keys. And uh, they let you stay in these cheap hotels and for free, basically for free. And uh, we just go out all day and murder lionfish. <laughs> so I might be down in South Florida sooner than later. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, Gruber Accountancy, don't give up on me. I'm having a little trouble where you started. Give me that IP config. We'll figure it out. Uh, D.L. Ross, I have been using simulations to get experience because I'm new to IT. Okay. Through Total 7 test out. Is it okay to use that when interviewing? Yeah. I mean, D.L. DL Ross, people aren't going to ask questions like that. Uh, you, you, your, your question's misdirected. Okay. Uh, can you, if we're to someone say, are you doing simulations to pass your A+. Plus? Sure, you could say yes to that, but that isn't how the conversation is going to go. DL Ross, first of all, you're going to be applying for an entry-level job, so they're not going to be asking you about experience in an entry-level gig, right? So, uh, but yeah, I mean, if you wanted to say that during an interview, you can do that. William Jeske, just as there's Moore's Law regarding processors and Kringley's Law regarding the tech industry, is there a collection of Myers Laws? Yes, I have hundreds of them. I, I've never put them all together. William is the problem. Uh, is there anyone I can think of quickly? Here's one that always gets a giggle out of people. When it comes to cabling things, if it isn't going in easy, you're probably doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. 2.07 p.m. Lay Steedman. Hello, Lay. I use your videos for my current A-plus training. Absolutely brilliant and really engaging. Thank you from the UK. Thank you, Lay. I appreciate it very much. Mr. Meeseeks. Look at me. Uh, D.L. Ross. Martin Luther King Day is in January. Farak Didar. MBR versus Gott. <laughs> Farak, I know what you're asking. Uh, we're actually going to do a little bit of that. Well, we're, M, you're look, you want to talk about MBR versus GPT? I can do that right now. <laughs> so, Farak, you have to ask me a question about it. What about uh, MBR versus GPT? You know, what, 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 what's the real question here? We can do this in just a second. No, no, no. Let's see what else we got. Mm -hmm. yep. Since the days of doom and quake, that is certainly true. Uh, there's Santee 209. So I was studying for CEH and noticed it seems easier than Pentest Plus was surprised. Santee, I was surprised too. Uh, the first iterations of Pentest Plus were not as hard as Certified Ethical Hacker, but uh, yeah, it does seem that the Pentest, and I had, I've never taken Pentest Plus, so. I, I, I can't tell you, I just go by the experience I'm hearing from other people, that it uh, does seem harder than Certified Ethical Hacker, absolutely. A lot cheaper too, as I, as I can, been known to think. Mm, 210, Mr. Me Seeks. So my flatmate set up a DNS server recently, okay, <laughs> which I haven't been able to access any web pages unless I type in IP at the address bar. And you're lucky if that works. My devices are the only ones affected. <clears throat> well, Mr. Meeseeks, okay, so we're going to diagnose this. So the first thing is, is just because he set up a DNS server, does that mean you're accessing it? So <clears throat> either you've typed in your DNS statically into your system, or you're using a DHCP server. So given the fact that your IP works, Let's see if I can, give me a sec here. Uh, 
All right, so what we're going to do here real quick is I have to understand, so what's happening is whatever you have for DHCP right now isn't working. So let's kind of go through the process of dealing with that. Give me a second to, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm firing up my uh, control panel on Windows 10 and I'm firing up uh, Network and Sharing Center. <laughs> All right, let me show you what I'm doing here. All right, so uh, here's some of the stuff I have in here. So here's my ethernet connection. This is my primary connection. I'm gonna go into properties on this thing. And I'm gonna take a look on, I'm assuming this is IPv4. You didn't say IPv6, so I'll just assume it's IPv4. All right, so one of the things you can do here is under your IP con configuration, you'll see that I'm still using DHCP for my IP address. But here I can set static DNS servers. Now the reason I'm doing it this way here in my network is I want everybody to use this particular DNS server at 172.18.13.5. I've set up what's known as a pie hole and I want to make sure everybody's going to that. However, there's other things you can do. Like for example, I could type in uh, a public DNS server like 8.8.8.8 and go ahead and run that and see if I suddenly work. In all probability, that's all you would need to do is, is type that in as either a first or a second DNS value. So that'd be the first thing I'd want to do. The second thing I want to do is make sure that this DNS server is even working properly. Just because your roommate set up a DNS server, I don't know your roommate, how did he configure this? What type of DNS server is he setting up? Is, he, is it a, uh, is it a, uh, can't remember any words anymore. Does it actually serve a domain? Is it, a, you know, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd want to look at it. But if you don't really care about the DNS server, just go into your control panel, network and sharing center, adapter settings, choose your adapter, and just type in an alternative DNS server. So unless his DNS server is doing something really compelling for you, you can use any other DNS server you want. Yeah, let's see if that even got anywhere close to being able to address your issue. Mm -mm -mm. Mr. Meeseeks, is this an issue you know of or is he just screwing with me? Nobody's getting screwed screwed with per se, Mr. Meeseeks. What's happening here is somebody's added a new piece of hardware and it isn't properly configured somewhere in the system. I, you know, I rarely assume there's any evil intent going on. It's just a matter of proper configuration. Do like what I just showed you. C name 2, Was the C name added or changed? I love the way, and it, Santi, I'm just going to pick on you because, well, I like you better than anybody else. And it was like, the C name. What is the C name? Are you talking about the canonical name for uh, a, 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 a something else? You know, some... pronouns, man, get me in trouble. They did this. All of those people. You see, they're wrong. It's like, who are these theys and theirs? And you know, I need I need names. Yeah, KD, lionfish are a big problem, and they're supposed to taste good, too. And they're trying to get people down in southern Florida to want to eat these lionfish. They're also poisonous, so kind of got to be careful with them. Yeah, I'm going to be checking it out. Uh, Lawrence, plus I've got a lot of good reasons to be in Florida. It's a great state. I got family and friends there, and I'm just trying to come up with a reason to drive out there. It's, for me, it's about an eight, oh, eight my rear end. It's about a 16 hour drive down to the center of Florida, maybe 20 hour drive total down to uh, Southern Florida. All right, uh, 2.13 p.m. Lawrence Tol 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 Tolentino, currently studying for my net plus. All right, good man. I'm currently making flashcards, good for you, out of all his exams objectives to enforce active recall. Is this too much? No, L Lawrence, if, you like, if you're a flashcard person, do it.
Mr. Meeseeks, I've already fixed it. Okay, so you already did fix it by switching it. Okay, you're just curious. My guess is, is your roommate messed it up somehow. The DNS server itself. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, it's very easy to misconfigure pie holes. And uh, he, he definitely needs to uh, make sure he's got that configured properly. 2.18 p.m. Cheeky Willie. Uh, thank you for taking the time of your day to help us. I do, Yeah, Cheeky, I'm, I'm here to help, man. I am here because Corona has screwed up everything for everybody, and I am glad to help. Oh, so you sent me it? All right, cool. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to have to take a momentary break. Everything's fine. I'll be right back. Bear with me. I need, where's my technical difficulties? There it is. All right, guys, bear with me. I'll be right back. Hang on. We're back, we're back. Check one, check one. Okay. Yeah, Kevin Lopez, you got that one figured out exactly right, man. Erp. Okay. Okay, we're back, we're back, we're back. Yeah, let's talk about Michael, he's gone. Uh, Edward's here, no, 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 let me get to, I don't wanna skip anybody. All right, I wanna check something real quick. All right, so uh, Gruber Accountancy, I just looked at the uh, text you sent me. I didn't see anything in there that looks strange. There are no weird IP addresses that shouldn't be there. Uh, I see you have an IP config for your wireless, so that seems to be the direction you're going. I don't want to say these numbers outside. <laughs> it's very frustrating. This thing just keeps... Uh... Okay. I'm looking at your uh, Gruber. I'm looking at your. Uh... I'm looking at the uh, net stat real quick. The one that Gruber just sent me. 
All right. So the only thing we're, that I can see is on the, uh, you have some connections to some stuff that nothing looks strange here to me. This, this is a Windows 10 system. Hang on a minute. It's a busy day in Mr. Meyer's neighborhood. I've got mail. I know you gotta bother putting this thing under my shirt because someone else is gonna come along and bug us. Okay, so uh, Gruber Accountancy, taking a look at what you're showing me here. Uh, you have some internal IP addresses that are pointing at strange things inside the network. You're using terms like WeWork. I don't even know why you're using that phrase with me. But, uh, you are definitely connecting to some things within the local network using ports like 8080 and stuff like that. I would like to know why you're doing that. No, you don't have to tell me. I would just like to know why you're connecting on port 8080 to anything. A lot of times that means you've got like an internal camera or something like that. All right, let me get lined back up here. Santi, 24-7, 365. We should all get like a team or Zooms. Wow, Santi, 24-7, 365. You think we should get teams or Zoom? Hey, Santi, how about better than that? How about a Discord channel? Now, I don't have a Discord channel, but um, my buddy Jose Braden has set up a Discord channel. I have things. So my buddy Jose Braden has set up a Discord channel. Scott Jernigan will put uh, the link up there for you. Uh, it is not a Mike Myers channel, okay? And uh, it, it's getting organized, but it still needs a little more organization. What the? It's a 1.8 inch drive. <laughs> Somebody heard me complaining on one of my uh, videos. I should be careful doing that. I've got a lot of 1.8 inch drives. So thank you. If this came from anybody online, appreciate it. All right. One more little toy for me. Yay. So, <coughs> so yes, yeah, Santi, uh, check out the, uh, check out the discord channel. It's pretty good. I'm working with VMware. Are there ISO files for phones? No. So Gruber, in order for there to be ISO files for phones, the phones would have to be running. You know, remember virtual machines are not emulators, right? They can only run what you already have. So for example, uh, most Google, let's go with Android. Uh, so Android's designed to run on ARM processors not regular Intel. Yeah, I know Intel makes ARM processors, but they're different platforms. So you cannot have an ISO to run that in VMware. Now they have emulation. <clears throat> For example, I know that you can fairly easily run Android emulators on just about anything you wanted, but you wouldn't be using VMware or anything like that. You would get whatever emulator software, Android, Look up Android emulator and you'll find there's a super common one. I think it comes with the Android developers kit. There's actually a built-in emulator in that. And I think there's something similar like that for uh, Apple as well, but I, I wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, Tollwitz on a roll today. Edward, hey Edward. Mike, in on a view practice questions, in one of your practice questions, it was asking which is identification method. The right answer was username and password. But isn't password an authentication method? All right, well, Edward, here's one of these types of questions where you can be technically correct but have no friends. So what they're saying here is they're saying, password and a username. So yes, you are absolutely right. A password is an authentication. However, a username is an identification. So by 
you know, with that particular question that says, username and password, uh, you can be all clever and go, well, you know, well, that username might be identification, but password is authentication, therefore that can't possibly be the right answer. And remember the number two reason most people fail CompTIA exams is because we know too much. So in a situation like that, look for the easier answer. And the easier answer is a username is very much an identifier and it would be a form of identification. <laughs> Dave Rush, hope he remembers to turn his mic off. I have stories about that stuff, that's for sure. Cheeky Willie, I switched from the NASA briefing for this. Yes, you did, Cheeky, and it just keeps getting funnier. Why do I have a sense today is going to be a very slow day? All right, uh, yeah, Farouk, I'll, we'll do MBR verse. I'll do what I can off the top of my head. Victor Mer 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 M E R A I. Hello, everyone. Hello, Victor. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you, man. Two twenty-two. You and your guys and your. Oh, there we go. Dave Rush even mentions the Discord channel for my buddy Santi. Uh, Edward, give some free stuff while Mike's away. No, it doesn't work that way. Kevin Lopez, potty break? Yes. Um, uh, Gruber Accountancy, I would like to put my data in the cloud, but I do not want to leave it exposed to prying eyes of the cloud provider. Do you have any recommendations? Sure. Uh, Amazon Web Services will do a good job. Uh, most of these uh, little mom and pop-ish, I shouldn't be, should be careful how I say that. A lot of people provide cloud access that are usually actually pretty good. Asus has a nice little cloud access. I'm not aware that Dropbox looks at your stuff. Does Is that an issue? Scott Jernigan, help me out here, man. Does Dropbox have a problem with people going through their stuff? I'll see what Scott has to say about that. But uh, yeah, Gruber, I found all of them to be somewhat okay. Even things like Google, which straight up tell you that they're looking at your data, they're not really looking at it. Um, yeah, that's always a trick. Look, I mean, if you're selling illegal drugs, uh, almost any of these guys will work with law enforcement to get you. Um, if, if you really want to keep your data the safest of safe, then just set up your own FTP site or something like that. It's easy to do. It's not hard to do. You can make them quite secure. So in essence, you're building your own cloud from the ground up. See, again, it's so many, so many variables about what you're doing and how it's working. It's always a challenge to be able to answer those questions. In general, what I don't like doing is stuff like using default cameras uh, that copy everything up to the cloud, those make me more nervous because it's very specific what they do. Um, so I won't use any of those cloud providers, but you can hook in your own cloud provider on anything. You know, as long as they've got a URL, you can plug anybody into anything. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, that door banging earlier was my mail coming in. Mm -hmm. Oh, so much mail. Internal Revenue Service. I'll read this one. Mm -hmm. I'm being audited. Nope. 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 Never mind. All right, we're good. Let's see, where are we at here? Dip -a -dip -a. You guys making naughty discussions about wine. Big Mike, hey Big Mike, 224 PM. My dad has had constant internet problems for the entire time he's had it. Says he has two routers and I think they may be broadcasting on the same channel interfering with each other. Are they, so routers can broadcast even if you've got two routers. So routers by the, 
Big Mike, you're making it hard. That's okay, we can do this. Number one, in an IPv4 environment, routers don't really broadcast anything. And as long as you're configured to talk to one or the other, and as long as both routers have an internal LAN address that's different than the other one that's unique, there's a lot of networks out there that have two routers on there to two different ISPs as a fallover kind of thing. So that's okay. So in an IPv IPv4 universe, there's no broadcasting. In a IPv6 world, you don't really have broadcasting per se, but what you will have is uh, multicasting for router advertisements and things like that. So uh, that certainly wouldn't be a problem in that particular case. Uh, but I, I don't. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be complaining about the routers. Then, you know, in Big Mike, I'd ask, like, how does your dad know he's having troubles? How does it act? Does it only happen on Tuesdays from 5 to 5.30? You know what I mean? Uh, so I'd need a lot more detail in terms of what's going on here. But that, yeah, unfortunately, that's all I can tell you right now. We'll see if anything else. We'll see, Mike, if you have any more details for me. God, it's only 2.36. Hmm. Okay, Big Mike, it causes tons of packet loss, and I think he hasn't turned off the routing features on the router to use it as a wet. Oh, now I see what you're trying to say. Okay. So you have two routers, one of them's acting as a wireless access point. So my other question is, is this other router, you have one router that's connected to your ISP. Now you've got this other router. Is it still connected to the ISP? If it's a wireless access point, it doesn't have to be. It, it, it would just unplug a lot of stuff. Uh, I can't easily get to a router to talk about this. But um, first of all, a lot of more modern home routers that have wireless actually have a, a buttons in there within the configuration that says just be a WAP. So that'd be one thing I would definitely do. Uh, the second thing I I'd be looking at is does this have a... a, a the router that's now acting as a wireless access point, it should only have one connection. And that connection would plug it into the rest of the network. So if it has a wireless access, if it has a WAN connection on the router, that probably shouldn't even be used if you're just treating it as a WAP. You're gonna have like four little connections in the back. One of those connections needs to go into your switch or whatever you're treating as a switch for your internal network. So. Yeah, that would be definitely something to look at. So Big Mike, how do you know it causes tons of packet loss? What symptom takes place that you go, ah, we're having tons of packet loss? Um, my Xbox detects a double NAT type and it loses connection intermittently. A double NAT type. So Big Mike, I've actually never worked with Xboxes. Um, I, I'm not I'm not as familiar with Xboxes. The concept of a double NAT type. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, I'm just reading through, trying to think of what else might be here. You know, the other thing to do on something like this, Big Mike, is can you plug whatever this system that's going down intermittently? Do you have a big, long cable? I always tell people, you should always have about 100 feet, 30 meters of, of cable. And the reason I keep that around is because I can do a diagnostic right here. See, because what I'd want to do is I'd want to test the network without the wireless in the way at all. Because I'm assuming that you're connecting to your dad's network or someone is connecting to your dad's network through the wireless access point, which used to be a router. Can you turn off the wireless access point and just do a direct connection to the regular old router and see how everybody's doing? Just ignore the wireless. Uh, you know, the, the biggest thing you can do with any kind of network diagnostic is trim out the excess parts of the network you don't need to look at, you know, and, and isolate the problem. Invariably, uh, like the, the, the situation you're telling me, is everybody having intermittent problems on your dad's network or is it just you? 
or you see where I'm coming from? By asking simple questions like that, I can usually zero in on where the problem is. If everybody's having a problem, I'm going to be looking at switches and routers. If it's only you that are having a problem, I'm going to be looking at your system. Mm. Oh, yeah, again, guys, I am so sorry. What happens here with my uh, YouTube, the, the live chat, is that I don't see anything, and then I'll try to scroll, and all of a sudden it goes, and it scrolls like 150 lines. So bear with me. If I miss one, just ask again. I'll, I'll catch it, because now I get to scroll up. Uh, guys, got to remember, there is we still have one cat that shows up, so little bits around here somewhere. And we can see the door in the mirror. The door That's the door to the front of my house. Santa, you can, uh, I'm getting confused. I got too many people asking me technical questions. We need to come up with a better way. I almost wish that we could have like a, have each person join Zoom one at a time or something like that. Uh, because I've lost track of what Santi originally asked me. I'm confusing it. All right, I'm going to tell you what. Santi 24 seven three sixty five Gruber accountancy you need to join the discord channel uh, join it today I'll tell you what after we're done talking uh, the questions are slow today I got a feeling we're gonna quit a little early I will be on that discord channel the problem we have here is I want to talk about uh, some other stuff and going through this slow uh, diagnostic is difficult so Santi and Gruber accountancy please at least get a microphone going okay I want to be able to talk to you in real time. Plus, we'll have folks like Andre and Tolowit. Uh, lots of other folks will show up, and we'll put a brain trust on it. But unfortunately, it's very difficult for me to help you with these problems and these little tiny blurbs. So talk to me on the Discord channel today uh, after we're done here, and we'll work you guys through it. So sorry about that, guys. It's just it's in little pieces. I'm getting confused. Uh, 2.31 p.m., Adrian Tech underscore ZA. Good evening, Mr. Mike Myers. Good evening, Adrian Tech ZA. Greetings from South Africa. Ooh, long way away. I've been reading a lot of your CompTIA books and finally put, yeah, here you go, man. Thank you for joining, Adrian. So Gruber Accountancy, how do I stop connecting to those 8080 ports? Well, Gruber, you're running something on your system that is connecting to them. Uh, I don't know what it is, but you, you've got some great tools to help you with that. Um, let's see. Uh, my problem is, is I'm so used to using other tools. There's really some good tools in Windows 10. I hate this thing sometimes. All right, so how do you get rid of these things that are connecting on 8080? Well, the thing is, is you got to find who is connecting on 8080. That's the start, right? So uh, let's take a look. Mm -mm -mm. And do remember what you're doing is your, your machine is going out and connecting to somebody on 8080. So probably the best way to handle this is to, here, let me show you. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm lighting up resource monitor. I started task manager up. And so then I go into resource monitor, monitor and I wanna see who's connecting. And then I can actually get the actual programs that are connecting on these ports. See the remote port? 
Look for 8080s here. This is resource monitor, okay? So to get to resource manager, I just started task manager up. Here you can see task manager. And then down, uh, this is so hard to, I gotta scroll, it's really small. And if you look at the bottom of task manager, it says open resource monitor. And that's how I got where I am here. So I'm looking at the TCP connections. Let me scroll up so you guys can see that. I've just got, you know, there's lots of ports I'm connected to. Do, am I connected on? Oh, I know what those are. So I've, I've got some 8060 connections, but I know exactly what those are. Those are some cameras I use. So uh, that is how, and you'll see what the program is. Then I can actually right click on the program. Oh, I can't. Uh, I mean, it'll still work, you know, uh, assuming it's not something you can't close. But that would be the next thing I'd, I would tell you to do. Uh, the other thing you can do is get a wonderful program called TCP View, TCPVIEW. And uh, it's a completely free program uh, written by a guy named Mark Rasinovich. And it will actually let you, just like Resource Monitor, will list all the stuff by port number. You can actually right click in TCP View and say, kill this process. So that would be the way I would do that. You could do it from a command line in PowerShell even if you wanted to, but I'm a graphics person for something like that. I did not intentionally connect to these. Yeah, no, you probably didn't. I noticed Fire Win Fi Windows Firewall does not allow me to restrict incoming by local IP address. Absolutely it does. So Gruber Accountancy is telling me that he cannot connect, he cannot block by local IP address. I call horse poop on that. Uh, let's check it. Mm, control panel. Sorry, I'm old school. No, I do not want Windows settings. I want control panel. All right, and so Gruber Accountancy, so you're telling me Windows Firewall does not allow me to restrict incoming by local IP addresses. Horse of poop. Where's the firewall? I always do this terrible. There we go, Windows Defender Firewall. Advanced settings, I'm sure it is. All right, watch. So, okay, so this is Windows Defender's firewall, and then I just clicked on advanced settings to get this window up, okay? So let's say I want to block incoming on my own local network. So, uh, duh, new rule. Uh, let's make sure you guys can see this. No, 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 no. So program and port, sure, predefined, not custom. It's been a while since I've done this. All programs. There we go. All right, so I could just type in uh, any particular IP address right here. Oh, that's the local. I want to do it on the remote IP address. I would do it down here. So under scope, let me cancel out of there because I'm about to make a rule that I'll never ever get out of. But you absolutely can do that with firewall. That's what I'm here for, man. Uh, Cheeky Willie, what do you think of Silver Sparrow? I don't know. I don't own any Apple junk. Isn't that that Apple malware that's just hitting people? Silver Sparrow? Welcome to the Windows world. I got to tell you, I am so paranoid. I'm actually going to, uh, I'm going to keep my fancy phone, but I'm actually getting rid of these types of phones completely, and I'm going to non-Android smartphones. There's a number of them out there. I just, too much Big Brother going on, man. I don't like that I have to log in with a Gmail address on a phone just to get it to work. I shouldn't have to do that.
Dave Data three two three four. Welcome aboard. Alberto Sauce Clips at three thirty three. Any thoughts on the Google IT? You know, Alberto, I'm getting a lot of people asking me about that, and I have not really played with it. Uh, I mean, I, I've, I've looked at that certification. It seemed very simplistic to me as my only critique, but that doesn't make it bad. I don't have a strong opinion on it. I mean, didn't that kind of say something right there? Uh, ever had a Western Digital USB drive just die on you? Dude, I've had everything die on me at least once. Yeah, uh, yeah, yes. The answer is yes. I wonder who sent me this 1.8 drive. Aren't these cute little drives? Remember these? I wonder if there's any data on it. <laughs> Put that in with my other collection. I told you guys last week I actually had to use my uh, external floppy disk. I actually had a reason to use this. I had a friend show up with some old Kodak photos. I think I did. I told you guys about that. All right. So we're good. It was an interesting situation. Two thirty-five p.m. Lawrence Tolentino. Another question. I know I'm probably thinking too much into this. But are the A or AAA record, is there essentially an A record for each individual host on the internal external network? No, there's only an A or a quadruple A record for people who you want to be able to DNS for. Like, for example, here in my little home network, I don't have DNS names for the individual computers. I'm not running a domain. I'm using a classic Windows workstation here. Uh, in offices that use Active Directory, you even then don't really have to have host names uh, for individual systems unless you really are aggressive about setting up and you should, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna set up an Active Directory, you should use a proper domain and you should configure this properly. Although Windows is very forgiving in a LAN scenario and will let you get around it. Uh, so there is not an A or a quadruple A record for each individual host, however, that's only because Windows supports a lot of older technologies that predate DNS. Uh, names like Wins and NetBias and SMB and stuff like that. And these protocols, which have been, some, some of these are pushing 40 years old and are still fully supported by the newest Windows 10 system. What Microsoft doesn't want you to do is they don't want you to call them. Microsoft does not want technical support calls. So in their universe, it's generally easier to provide a broad cross section of support for older protocols. And in that case, a lot of times, Windows will forgive you, link layer, uh, link layer discovery protocol, there's a bunch of them in there. Um, it's actually, I can show you. I know this isn't really within the, what you were asking, but I'm gonna show you anyway. Da -da 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 -da. Um, I can get you there. Hang on. All right, so I'm going to light up control panel. I'm going to head over to network and sharing center one more time. And I'm going to go to change adapter settings. Let me show this to you. So if I right click on something and I hit properties, all right, so come over here. What you're gonna see is there's all kinds of protocols that we tend to ignore. I mean, most of us look at the TCP IP4, right? But they don't look at stuff like, see, this is link layer discovery protocol. And uh, uh, this is uh, discovery responders. So Windows systems work really, really, really hard to make them very discoverable. And because of that, most Windows networks get pretty lax when it comes to setting up DNS. I mean, unless the thing's a server. I mean, if the, you got a machine inside your network that is a straight up uh, web server, let's say you have an internal web server that you use just for in-house or something like that, sure, uh, those will certainly have records. You got an FTP server, you got a VoIP server, you got a camera, you got a printer, stuff that often you know, you want to query to. 
uh, you usually have a DNS server, which is configured because you've set up an Active Directory, and off you go. Uh, there is nothing wrong, nothing wrong with a person. Forget Windows. Let's, let's do it in a pure Linux environment. Uh, you could set up a Linux environment in a trivial fashion, uh, and Linux is not nearly as good as with all these protocols for finding other machines. But let's say you have nothing but Linux systems and you have cameras and a Nest thermostat and all this stuff, and you want to query all these things, you're going to give all these things probably static IP addresses, that's what I would do. And then, uh, then you would spin up a DNS server and you would put all of those records in there and I would do it manually. But only for stuff that's serving. <laughs> All right, Dave, I will take a look at, I will, I will take a look, Alberto Sauce, I'll take a look at this Google certification thing. Let me write that down so I don't forget. First you take the cattle to the killing floor. What's a Google IT? I'll check it out. Thank you. You, you, you. It's not the first time I've heard about this a number of times as of late, and I've just been ignoring it, but I will not ignore it anymore. <laughs> Scott Jernigan is sending me sentences from a few minutes ago saying, I need to jump on Task Manager to kill. Uh, now you got me curious, Scott. So Scott's saying I need to go on Task Manager to actually kill the program. There is an end task. Of course, there's an end task in there. That would make sense. I have got no problem with that, Scott, with uh, one exception being uh, something like this. Here, Scott, let me show you where I'd be a little uncomfortable doing this. In uh... So... Here is, I'd be nervous about killing these because I wouldn't know which one it is. So Scott's now telling me I was trying to kill via resource monitor. I think what I was saying, to be completely accurate, <laughs> hang on, let me square this up. Network. <laughs> Watch this got jerked again. Neener, neener. Okay, so here I am in resource monitor. I had to check it. I'm very careful about this. So if I check this and right click, I do see an end process. So it looks like I can kill things in a resource monitor. Although I'd be nervous about doing that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You see Scott yelling at me. All right. Da, 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 ba, ba. How are we doing on it? Questions here. Because I actually do want to cover uh, a couple of things today. Um, Gruber Accountancy, do you have any course that covers VMware in depth? I do not. Sorry, man. JS Brobbery 200. I remember you. Hello, Mike. How are you doing? Doing good. Yeah, I hope everything, everything's right. <clears throat> Dave Data, you guys are talking to each other, always good. Hamal Ganatar, Hanal Ganatra, Ganatra. Hey Mike, how you doing? Doing great, Hanal. Elise's Ferrar shows up. It's, oh, God, told it. I swear. Um, I've lost it. I, I did another thing where everything spun. I've, I've lost where I was. Sorry, guys. Uh, where are the 
questions? Elbows here. Elbow. All right. Wait a minute, Elbow. You're supposed to be gone by now. Oh, no. Did I cuss again, Scott? All right. Gruber Accountancy. How do we connect on Discord? Gruber, someone, will, if they haven't already put it up on the uh, live chat, they'll put it up there again. Can somebody post the uh, Discord channel for Gruber for me, please? Yeah, the the cold weather is passed here in Texas, guys. It's uh, it's back up to what is the temperature right now? Seventy five degrees Celsius. So what is that? Twenty twenty seven degrees centigrade, something like that. Elbows at 252. I have a floppy disk as my coaster. I used to have huge boxes of AOL floppy diskettes. I, don't, I threw them all away. I realize now I could have made some groovy art thing from them, but oh well. There you go, Groover. I can see the Discord link. And, uh, 252. How are we doing? We're at 302. Yeah, we burned an hour already. I'll tell you what, guys. I, I still haven't caught up with everybody's questions. Um, anyway, um, let's go ahead and first off, I want to talk about the boot process. Um, there's not a lot of questions on CompTIA. In fact, the only CompTIA exam I'm aware of that asks anything about a boot process is uh, the CompTIA A plus exam. So that's the first thing. But I did get a question last week about the boot order, and I don't even remember who asked me. It's one of you guys. So I was thinking to myself, how can I answer that question? Because you, you actually bring up a more interesting points when you talk about a boot process than anything else. I could spend a, most of a day just talking about UEFI, right? Um, you, I could talk, I could spend probably multiple days talking about, uh, windows and Intel safe boot processes, which is another big deal and TPM. And, you know, people always think that like uh, TPM trusted platform module, that that's just for what people don't even know, uh, when fully configured and depending on the manufacturer, people like Hewlett Packard and Dell in particular have really good ones. You can set up a complete safe boot scenario. You'll never get a root kit. You can't, uh, just by the nature of the beast. You, uh, any corrupted driver, your actual image of your operating system is tested every time before it boots. Uh, it, it's very, very secure. And if you haven't played with a trusted platform module system, I recommend you do. Uh, today, you can do TPM on just about any system. Uh, they do basically a software trusted platform module that runs a software. It's not quite as secure, but it's very secure. And you should check it out. Uh, so th there's a lot to talk about when you say the word, how, do you, how does a Windows system boot? Okay. So what I've done today is I've kind of taken a smaller piece of this. So th th this isn't a big chunk, but it's enough to maybe get your head wrapped around the boot process. And uh, what I'm also gonna warn you is what we're about to go into, other than the last slide, there's only about five slides in this presentation, other than the last slide is way deeper than anything you're ever gonna see on CompTIA. But remember, if you ask me a question, there's four reasons for me to teach you something. Number one, it'll make you a better tech. Number two, it will help you pass a certification. Number three, cause it's cool. And then number four, Sometimes I have to teach you what you don't know, because if I don't teach you what you don't know, 
you will be frustrated with Mike Myers and say Mike Myers is a terrible instructor, pee wee, pee wee, pee wee. So what we're gonna do is we talk about the Intel Windows boot process. Some of this is stuff you don't need to know. Now, is it fascinating and in this measure of technical information, is it good? Yes, but you're not ever gonna pass a CompTIA certification based on the first couple of slides. But still, it's interesting, let's do it. I whipped these up quickly, guys, so they're not very pretty, but they'll work. Let's do this. All right, so first of all, there's really three big pieces when we talk about the boot process. So the first thing that's gonna be taking place is you're gonna go through the power on self-test and the UEFI or what most people still call a bias and getting that up and going. Then secondly, uh, then we're, then we're gonna be in, in UEFI and this part two is the UEFI boot manager and finding the right thing to boot. And then once the boot manager under UEFI has found an operating system in this particular case, Windows, and it begins booting that, what does Windows do to get itself up and running? So think in terms of those three steps. All right, let's do this. So first of all, we have the power on self-test or UEFI. So everything starts off with what's called the power management controller. The power management controller is basically built into the CPU. And uh, it has control over a lot of stuff. Now you gotta be careful here. When we talk about a CPU anymore, it wasn't even maybe 10 or 15 years ago when a CPU only did calculations. CPUs didn't have memory controllers in them. CPUs in general didn't have port controllers in them. Uh, you know, there's a lot, the CPU just did calculations because that's what we paid it to do. And we used to have these things called chipsets with a north bridge and a south bridge that would handle other support work. Like a north bridge would talk to your RAM for you and the, uh, do, these chipsets do a lot of different things. Don't think they only do one thing. So the north bridge would talk to your RAM for you and maybe some of your higher speed buses. The south bridge would talk to your mice and keyboards and stuff like that. Today, chipsets, even if you have a chipset, because a lot of these systems, like the ones in your phones and such, are, are what we call a system on a chip, and they basically do it all. But if you do have a chipset, you're usually going to just have one chip, and that's usually known as the PCH. So even the terminology Northbridge and Southbridge, even though you may see that term on an exam, really doesn't exist anymore. Uh, if you have a support chipset, you usually only have, almost always just have one chip, and that's called your PCH, and don't ask me what PCH stands for. All right, so anyway, so when, this, when your computer starts to boot up, if you ever look at your power supply, on the power supply, there's a green wire, and this green wire is called the power, the power good wire. And uh, that's how, like with this guy here, in order for me, this is a power supply tester. I plug this into the big connector on my power supply and I can test the power supply itself. But what I want you to do is if you take a look, I've got all these little connectors. One of those, I guarantee you, is the power good. I used to remember where it was by memory, but now I just go by color. And uh, I can take a paper clip on a power supply and just bend the paper clip and shove one into that green wire and shove the other one into any black ground wire and the power supply will start. It'll just start up. So in order for a computer to just get going, uh, you'll notice PCs don't have a go button, right? You just turn them on. And once you turn them on, once the uh, power management controller gets enough voltage to begin its process, that's the first thing that wakes up. So, so the power management controller, he boots up, and the first thing he does is he sends out a reset signal to actually everything in your computer. I say here, I just say a uh, reset signal to the CPU, but that's actually inaccurate. Uh, power management controller is on the, on the big bus. He can talk to anybody. And he basically puts everybody on hold for a little bit because he's, he's watching the power good, make sure the power good gives it enough juice, and then he goes through something very, very important. He uses a feature that's built into the PCH called the Converged Security and Management Engine, 
or the CSME. Today's systems are so security nutsy that you can't avoid some amount of security. And when we're talking about security here, we want to say, has a bad guy while your computer was turned off, did he do something? Did he change a driver? Did he uh, gefugle and try to insert something onto your hard drive? Or does he have a thumb drive in there that's bad or, you know, that's got evil software on it? So the whole idea behind CSME is to protect you from that stuff. So what CME, CSME does when it first starts to boot up, and by the way, CSME has its own bias. It's not the, it's not the computer's bias. It's its own separate bias. You can't see it, you can't touch it, you just, it just goes, okay? Really, okay? Uh, well, Mike, how can that be? I thought we only had one bias. No, you got a ton of biases on your computer. You'd be shocked how many different biases sit on the standard desktop PC. Anyway, the bottom line is, so, uh, so CSME, he goes in to get started. He's got his own bias, his own microcode, and all he's doing at this point in the boot process, we're right at the very beginning, folks, is he's just making sure the TPM chip's working, everything, everything's good there, and getting the security set up. If any hashing or uh, encryption has to be preset or anything, what it might be, CSME's got this covered. It just goes, all right? And so it has all the security stuff set up, so as more stuff gets initialized or started in the process, this stuff's ready to go to check it. <clears throat> okay, so once the CSME's got all the security stuff started, then it goes ahead and lights up the CPU and the CPU begins to take over from this point. So here's where the CPU is gonna initialize and uh, the power on self-test starts to kick in. And after that takes place, then, uh, then the CPU uh, starts to talk to your BIOS, your UEFI, it's already done post. And what it wants to do is it, it wants to find out uh, where to boot from. So it goes to, there's a certain part in your UEFI. You guys surely, yeah. UEFI has its own big space on, on your drive. Do I even have one on here? Let's take a little peek here. You guys have all seen this. So, take a look here. You'll see I've got an EFI partition on here, okay? And uh, I can't really look at it easily. And don't bother just trying to put a drive letter on it. It doesn't really help. Uh, and there's really no good reason, unless you've got an error or something, to even try to get in here. But the um, UEFI has a lot of stuff in there. Uh, you can have pointers towards different operating systems. You can have all kinds of stuff in there, all right? And, uh, but the goal for UEFI is to find the right thing for you to boot from. So it's, the first, well, actually, God, I'm going to have to backtrack a little bit. So not only does the CPU initialization take place, but the, UE, the UEFI itself is already tested by CSME. Uh, you can run a quick hash to make sure nothing's been corrupted on that. The other thing that takes place is with BIOS, you got a lot of uh, hardware. Today, if you go into a system setup, you got pretty graphics, you probably have sound, your mouse is working, uh, you can set UEFI up. Very few people do this, but it is part of the feature set. It's like you can set up UEFI. So one of the things that you can boot to is a web browser. You can just boot up to a web, no operating system, just get a web browser going. It's, it's a primitive uh, operating system, but you can just boot up to an operating, uh, boot up to a web browser. It always interests me. People don't do more of that, but you know, whatever. So you have all these device drivers that are being loaded. These are not gonna be the same device drivers that are being used later for your Windows or whatever, but it's enough to 
get a lot of stuff done. Even those are all checked. They're known as DXE drivers, so they're all checked. So a lot goes on here. Let's get back to the PowerPoint. All right. So what? So we've already started the boot for the UFI. It starts up all the hardware drivers and it checks all those, make sure that they're okay. And then the last thing UEFI does is it loads the boot device selection module, the BDS module. And this is basically the information that's built into your uh, boot that says, where do I want to boot from? And uh, surely I've got an example. Yeah, here we go. It's not a very pretty example, but it gets the idea. So like here's a system that this is, you can see this. This is an older one because it has both what we call legacy and UEFI. This is a pretty old boot order. And you can see these are the different UEFI uh, DXE devices it can boot from. And then you'll see way down here at the bottom, it just says like CD, DVD. That means boot to it as though it wasn't even using UEFI. Which is not something we want to do really anymore. That's, in fact, I don't like that example. That's the problem you guys get when you get all this free Mike Myers training. Stuff like that is you're my guinea pigs. I get to try stuff on you. It's fun. Okay. Okay. So back to the PowerPoint. Da, 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 da. All right. So, so UFE boots up as, it, as it's booted. The first thing it does is it dumps all your DXC drivers. That's because Windows is going to load its own drivers. So these get dumped. And the boot order tells UEFI where to look for a boot partition. Now, once you get to the boot partition, we don't use the word U when we refer boot partitions. You could if you want to. We usually just use the term EFI boot partition. So in the Windows world, and it's in that first partition we looked at, there's going to be a file called bootmanagerw.efi. This thing starts firing up by UEFI, and it starts setting up power management, uh, security policies. There should be a comma there. And once that's all set up, it starts to boot Windows. And so it's going to use a program called winload.exe or winload.efi. Those are interchangeable terms. And that program right there is going to start Windows. Okay, so now we're here on the last step, and here's where Windows loads. So that uh, winload.exe starts up, and winload.exe is going to call two files, NTOS knl.exe and hal.dl, those are loaded. winload.exe then reads your registry, picks a hardware profile, starts loading your device drivers, and then once this is all loaded, it passes it over to another program called ntoskrnl.exe, which begins the boot process. And the biggest thing that NTOS kernel does, first of all, he is your primary memory management, and he'll be running all the time. Uh, and then he loads winlogon.exe. Winlogon.exe is your logon screen. And he'll start up right then. I've skipped a couple of things. If they're auto starting programs and a couple of little things like that. And uh, so that's basically your boot process in a, in a Windows environment. The First part about this, when we start talking about CSME and stuff like that, is so incredibly complicated that I don't even want to try to explain it to you. But I did, if you really want to get into this, there's this great kid, I think he's Polish. Uh, English isn't his first language is why I'm bringing this up. And I gave you the link right here, that, this one down here. Uh, Michael Smyer connected me to this. That really talks about secure boot and uh, fascinating. But a lot deeper than you're ever going to see on any certification exam. So there you go. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Mm -mm -mm. William Jeske, if I've earned the ITF plus and CompTIA A plus cert, a plus, or should I cite both on a resume? Sure, of course. You always put your certifications on a resume. The only time you wouldn't, William, is like six years from now when you become a big Cisco router nerd. There's a point where some of these more entry-level certifications, you just stop using them. But early on in the process, you definitely put them all in there. 
I've seen people who put a zillion on there. I, I, I'm, there's a certain point where it becomes a little bit obnoxious. It's like a general with too many medals. Elbows at talking about PS4. Uh, I, I do not know about these PS4. Mm -hmm. Did Spewy walk by? I didn't even see her. Mm -hmm. Are people talking to my buddy Alex? I see people reference her. I don't see her say anything. Dave Data, 3.14 p.m. Hey, Mike, I have a question about plunder vulnerability. Is there a way to force a downgrade of a bias that won't revert back to an older release? Not that I'm aware of. I, I'm always pretty persnickety about upgrading biases. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's a tricky thing. Do you upgrade your firmware? 99% of the time I do. Things like Plunder Vault are rare and weird. Uh, where it actually, in essence, puts malware on your firmware. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. It does happen, but it's rare and weird. So what do we do about this? Well, if my money, if my reputation or my money is based on me updating uh, individual systems firmware, God, I usually just update. Uh, but I will also tell you this, I didn't get caught by Plundervolt. That was like two years ago or something, wasn't it? I forget. You take your chances. Sometimes you mess up. <laughs> Oh, uh, just a quick reminder. Um, so Dave is saying you can downgrade a bias. Dave Rush says you can downgrade a bias. I am not going to be able to say that I share Dave Rush's experience. I will say things like uh, certain makers of motherboards uh, will actually make what are known as dual biases. In that case where like say you upgrade one You've got a backup copy where you can uh, go back to it, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to respectfully disagree with Dave, at least in terms about talking about motherboards, uh, where we're up, we're flashing systems. Maybe we'll let Dave Rush teach a class on how to downgrade. I'm gonna here. I'm gonna give Dave some hassle about that. So before Dave Rush gets a chance to go, oh, no, Mike, I was only talking about blue striped computers every Saturday on Mars. Uh, I'm talking about system firmwares. Is there a way to downgrade any generic desktop systems uh, firmware? We'll see. Maybe Dave, Dave Rush is a good technician, man. I learn a lot from him every day. But yeah, uh, one of the things I do, Dave Dad, is I, I like to use a brand of get motherboard called Gigabyte, mainly because they have that dual bias feature. Asus, most of the, my higher end Asus boxes also have that feature as well. There are certainly some that you can download. However, there is no one standard thing that works across the board. Woo! Uh, Max Suter Raman at 314. One question, compared to CCNA, is Network Plus similar or a bit more difficult? Neither. I feel that Network Plus is easier than CCNA. Uh, for example, Network Plus doesn't really have any iOS commands on it. In my opinion, the CCS certification 
is an iOS certification for Cisco routers and switches. And while it does have some general questions on there, uh, like you would see with a Network Plus, uh, they're, they're extremely different. In my opinion, a Network Plus certification is going to make learning CCNA much easier, but they're different animals. I do not compare the two. Mike made a typo? Never. Eight, six, seven, five, three. I got, I just seen uh, Santi's 24, seven, 365. Eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. Eight, six. Sorry. Uh, he's okay. Dave Rush is answering questions here. Always appreciated. Tolo, it is very funny. At 320. So when do you edit the autoexec.bat file? You have to type sysedit.exe. Rajing, now starting. What's the recommended path infrastructure or cybersecurity? The CompTIA A Plus. Start with that. Rajing, uh, I'm, I'm not, these are broad questions are always trickier for me to answer than detailed questions. Rajing, here, send me an email, man. And we can talk about this in great detail. And the reason I make a joke, folks, is like, when you ask a question that's so broad like that, it's like, what do I, what do you, I, I, I joke and I make the joke that you are asking me, what do I want to be when I grow up? Uh, so I have to ask more detailed questions back, but we'll get you answered. EMH, any recommendations for a good router? Uh, are we talking home or enterprise? Uh, for these home routers right now, as long as you get a home router that supports 802.11ax, they're all fine. I, I don't have really one that I like better than the other. I've been using this Asus router here for a while. What am I using? Home router. So I've been using the, let me get this so you guys can see it. So I've been using this Asus RTAX88U. Seems pretty good. I've been happy with it. Give it a try. Screaming fast uh, network, wireless, and great, great uh, bandwidth on the wired side as well. That's th those are the things I look for more than anything else in a home router, is good wireless support and good good bandwidth support on the wired side. Uh, here at my house, I've got a gigabit coming up and down, and you'd be surprised a lot of home routers cannot handle that one. This Asus can. Oopsies. Okay, but uh, where, I've lost everybody. Come back to me. Oh, there you are. God, it's 3.30 already. Hmm. Uh, guys, do remember, just because you were nice enough to show up here today, you get 50% off all of my practice questions. All you have to do is go to www.totalsem.com, head over to the merchant area, and when you get to the merchant area, just grab yourself some A+, plus or Net+, plus or Security+, plus, and then uh, before you check out, just type in the code, oh God, Scott, where's the code? What is the magic code for today? The magic code is URI2021 and you get half off. I already have the cheapest good practice questions out there and we're 50% off on top of that. These are ridiculously good deals, guys. Ridiculously good deals. Please take advantage of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
EMH. I just had a Linksys WRT ACM 3200, but it just started, uh, that, that's just gonna happen sometimes. I mean, how do you start your computer experience? Right here, Dennis, right here. Dennis Belazorov, Belazorov at 323. Dennis, join the Discord channel, get a camera. You don't even need a camera, just have a microphone and a headset so we can talk. And we'll just put you in a big pile of us. And we've got great folks here on, on the Discord channel. Scott Jernigan will be there. Dave Rush will hopefully be there, as well as all the wacky folks like uh, Tolowit and Andre, who will also be there as well. And it, these are good discussions to have with a group of nerds. And uh, I can't think of a better place for you to take advantage of that than at this Discord channel. And again, we'll be I, I'll be on the Discord channel today after this. So I, I need about 10, 15 minutes after we leave off, whenever that is, and I'll be on there too. But EMH, seriously, join. It, it, it'll be helpful. Dennis, not EMH, you got it there. Alex is on. Uh, 327, Tom Jeffrey, doing your A-plus course. Mike, I'm 29. Do you think I left it a bit late? Dude, you're, I know people 50 years older than you, five zero years older than you who are jumping into this industry, Tom. You're not too old. Iman Verk, hi, sir. Hi, in, in, uh, in, am, in, am, in, am. I have my CompTIA A-plus and A-plus secured by CCA. What would you recommend next? You know, are you working? So 3.25 p.m. And I'm Verk. Do you have a job now? So that would be the thing I would say to you. Because what you've done is you've covered the core stuff. And I'm, so now you should be in a point where you're starting to see where your passion are. What sparks joy, right? Maybe you're really, so I see you've got a CCNA. Maybe you want to go for your CCNP. Maybe you like Cisco. Maybe you're thinking about going into wireless. Maybe you're thinking about becoming a security, pure security professional. I can't tell you what to do next. Maybe you want to get into Microsoft. So in, in NAM, my answer to your question is I'm going to say, where is your passion taking you? What are you enjoying the most? Do that. Yeah, Dave, Dad, I understand. I'm not going to try. I, I, Dave, Dad, I bring that question online to the Discord channel today. Let me and the rest of the gang beat you up. And by beat you, I don't, obviously, we're kidding. That is a joke. But we will have a good discussion. Kevin Lopez, is there any way to stop a de-auth attack? Uh, is there any way to stop a de-auth attack? On some routers, no, no, there wouldn't be. Um, doggone it. I'm going to have to do a little research on that one. There is a way to do it, but uh, it's going to require different kinds of equipment. Uh, one thing for sure, when WPA3 comes around, which is just around the corner, it's going to be out this year uh, to replace WPA2 for wireless networks, the whole concept of deauth attack disappears. It won't exist anymore. So there might not be a way to kill it right now, uh, but I will tell you this, that soon, as soon as WPA3 comes along, the whole concept of deauth attack becomes obsolete, and I'm going to have to come up with new ways to hack people's wireless networks because all my tools are going to stop working. Okay, well, I'll tell you, man. 
Questions are coming today. Ukrainian. Mm. Welcome aboard, Dennis. I like Ukrainian food. Yes, Andre, I call you a nerd all the time, often when you're not online either. Mm -hmm. Eric Sinizaukas. Uh, Eric, I'm going to be 42 in truck driving for the last 14 years. Going to make an IT career change. I don't think it's too late. Neither do I, man. Ibrahim mm -hmm. Abdul Galhil. Thanks, Mike, for your LinkedIn courses. About A+. Plus. No problem there, Ibram. Ooh, you're Palestinian. Everybody's welcome here, that's for sure. Vista Chris. I love Linux and a command line interface. Now, there's something you don't hear very often. What's the most popular Linux distro for enterprise? What, you mean in terms of raw numbers? What's that Google's weird distro that they make for themselves is probably one. I don't know. I don't know. Um, my buddy Alec, Alex Potsy is probably a better answer for you than that one. EMH, has anyone heard about DDR5? Yeah, DDR5 and DDR6. Yes, we do not hack other people's networks. Well, no, I hack other, I hack my own networks all the time. I mean, that's the best thing to hack is, especially if you're just practicing wireless stuff, you know, you, you know, you got your little wireless tools and you want to practice cracking stuff. You just set up your own network and play with that. What becomes interesting, if you just want to play with wireless uh, hacking, uh, is getting different types of home routers. Because there's a huge difference in terms of home routers in terms of strength and weaknesses. Like for example, um, probably the easiest way to hack into almost any home router is to use a WPS attack. And, uh, and we've known this for years. This is not new at all. But to this day, uh, I've got a brand new home router down here that uh, is still subject to that WPS attack. I have other routers that, uh, most of my other routers, like if you try to crack it, you're never going to get it right the first time. So you'll say, oh, here's my WPS key. And it'll be wrong. And the router will then go, oh, you got it wrong. You get two more tries, and then you're going to have to wait one minute, then three minutes, then eight minutes. You know what I mean? And then other ones don't. So this is the thing. When people get into any type of penetration testing, they all think it's a matter of grabbing some device and going bleep, blop, blurp, blurp, and hit enter, and then all the answers come falling out. You know, It's like the guy in the movie who's trying to crack a password, right? It's always, shoot, darn it. Okay, I'm in. I mean, give me a break. There's subtleties, and you know that, that's why most of the, most of the tools that are in Kali Linux, for example, are not easy tools to use. Uh, they're not intuitive because they don't need to be intuitive because they're only being used by people who are pretty highly skilled. You are, and you have to have some understanding how the tool works. Not only how the tool works, but what are you going to be attacking? Because things change depending on how you attack them. Uh, grabbing a hash lift of passwords out of a Linux system is a lot different than grabbing a hash, bunch of uh, password hashes out of a Windows 10 professional system. So the people who make these tools, the uh, Hashcat, for example, for cracking passwords, they don't care. They're not interested in making their tools simple for people to use. 
because if you need a simple to use tool, then perhaps you're not the right kind of people for Hashcat to be offering you this tool too. Do you get the idea? <clears throat> That's always an important thing when, when people talk about, eh, I'm getting off. But yes, I do lots of hacking, but I hack my own stuff. Mainly because, <laughs> Andre, I'm sorry. I like Ukrainian women. Yes, I'm, oh, oh, I like one Ukrainian woman. Yes, Andre, your lovely wife. Sorry, I miss. <laughs> I thought you had typed in something very different. Ignore me. Let's get back to the questions. <laughs> There you go, Dave. Dave Rush says, Centos Red Hat or Ubuntu. Uh, Maxidur Raman, whaling and spear phishing symptoms being almost similar. How do I really how do I readily say that is a whaling email or a spear phishing one? Uh, it's interesting. I guess whaling tends to point towards your, it, it's, whaling is a form of spear phishing, but you're really going for a big name. You know, you want to try to get Donald Trump or, uh, you know, some big celebrity or something like that. Whereas spear phishing means you're just going for a particular person, whether that person is famous or rich or not, isn't a difference. So see if, yeah, so we'll see if anybody goes with that one. When will we have an uh, A plus cert? Dennis, Dennis at three thirty eight. He's asking when will we have an update on A plus twenty twenty two. Nothing's been announced yet. It will probably be late this year or early next year, Dennis. But at this point, uh, at this point, no, we haven't heard anything. So, uh, Max Suter, is there any distinct feature that separates spear phishing from whaling? So when you're going for whaling, you're, you're going for the big boss, the super famous person, the great footballer, the financier, something like that. that think in those terms. That, that'll be the only real difference. Looking for questions. Adam DG at 341. Greetings from South Africa. Keep up the good work, Mike. Will do. That's the second person from South Africa today. I need some Pinotage wine, man. South Africans, man. Y'all make some good wine. Excellent wine. Oh, Kevin, don't give people ideas. Someone is going to clip Mike saying stuff out of context one day. It's going to happen. Santi, 24-7's got to go. All right, man. Hopefully we'll see you. Uh... Well, join Santi, join anytime you want. And you can literally log in to Discord. And if nobody's on, you pick a moment nobody's on, just leave a message on Discord. People will answer, usually quite quickly. Jorge Luis. Thank you, Michael Myers. Thank you, Jorge. Plan on taking the CompTIA A plus next week. Good luck, man. Uh, Justin Maines. What is a good way to study for A plus? Well, here's, come here. This is a good place to start. Justin, the rules are always the same. At the very least, you need practice questions. Lots of people sell practice questions. We sell them right here at Total Seminars. In fact, I'm selling them for 50% off today. Uh, but you got to have practice questions. If you buy only practice questions, then okay. Most people need practice questions. They need a book and they need videos. And we say, well, Mike, can I get away with, you can get away without everything. I'm just telling you the three things that I know 99% of the people use to successfully pass any certification, not just CompTIA, not just mine. Uh, anything. Practice questions, a book, 
and videos. And uh, we got them all right here for you, brother. Got them all right here in River City. It's 6.43 a.m. I got to go to work. All right, man. Later. Hasta. The sunscreen song. I'm not even sure what that is, but uh, Ulysses Ferrer. Is anyone doing Discord afterwards? Yes, I'll be on there. Uh... Mm -mm -mm -mm. EMH, my wife wants to set up some IP cameras. Any recommendations? Uh, Amcrest. I've been having pretty good luck with the Amcrest. They had had a couple of security issues, but they seem to be actively patching them and they're aware of it, which is better than anything else you could possibly ask for. Amcrest. Uh, do I have any? Yeah, unfortunately, I tend to delete these rather quickly. A-M-C-R-E-S-T. They got tons of cameras. Uh, I don't use any of the cloud stuff. Okay, yeah, all right, guys. Looks like things are starting to quiet down, which is fine. Uh, first of all, uh, Dave Rush wants to remind me this Friday, 226, either Chromium command line kiosk ops or install a chat server on a Raspberry Pi. Still debating. All right, that sounds good. Uh, da -da -da, DL Ross, I think that that lady is. Hebrew writing is a female. I'm just, you know, I just don't say nothing anymore and I'm safe. Glad to have that person on board in whatever capacity that they feel comfortable being here. It just doesn't matter. Okay. Also, do uh, guys, do keep in mind, remember, uh, be sure to like and subscribe to the Total Seminars channel. Those likes and subscriptions really help. If you like what I have to say, give me a thumbs up. And if you don't like, give me a thumbs down. Just like to hear all the YouTube people say it. I get to say it too. Uh, so that should be just fine. Uh, be sure to put that in. And uh, I think that's just about it. I, I don't think I've forgotten anything today. Oh, you just forget something, but we'll get there. Anyway, it is, uh, we're going to stop about uh, 12 minutes early. It's not that big of a deal. I will be on in about 12 minutes on the Discord channel. So last chance anybody, well, let's see. We got, things are scrolling. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah, I think that is it. All right, guys, I will see you all on Wednesday. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'll do an extra good MBR versus GPT. I've got a nice presentation. I'll pull that down and make it real pretty for you guys. And we may have already done it. Let me talk to Scott Jordan again. We may already have a video on MBR versus GPT. We'll see if that could pop up. Anyway, I will see you guys on Wednesday. And until then, this is your little Uncle Mikey saying good night.